put a tassel in Hebrews 9, and then turn your Bible to Exodus 19. My brother Brent, he did a fantastic job while I was gone and then felt called to lead last week, and I'm thankful and love him. Um, He adores this church and loves God's Word, and I'm very thankful to have men like that around me. So here's the question. If you are a note taker, this is, in fact, the second most important question you will ever ask yourself. I don't care who you are, how you were raised, your thoughts. It does not matter your age, male and female. Second most important question man will ever ask himself, and it is this. Are you ready to face and meet your maker? Sermons have been Preach from the beginning of time and continue. There is no heavier question than this, that there will be a day where you stand before the Lord. It is the second most important question man will ever have to ask himself. Are you ready to meet God? I want you to think about it. We're going to really unpack this. It's really the only thing we're speaking of today. Are you ready to meet your maker? Look at Exodus 19, verses 1 through 6. Now, as I read here, I want you to understand the moment. We are about to go into the Ten Commandments. Here is a moment in the story where the people are out there. They are walking. They are tired. They are on empty. They are complainative. Moses is trying his best. He's made some leaders amongst them. And God and Moses have continued to communicate. Moses going to the people. But what we see in 19, the people are about to speak to God. They are about to enter an engaged conversation with the Lord. So look at verses 1 through 6. In the third month after the children of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on the same day they came to the wilderness of Sinai, for they had departed from Rephidim and had come to the wilderness and had camped in the wilderness, so Israel camped before there on the mountain. And Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, And tell the children of Israel, you have seen what I've done. So this is what God tells Moses to tell them, right? So Moses is going back and forth, back and forth. God speaks to Moses. Moses speaks to them. He goes and speaks to God, right? And so we have the mountain. We have the people. We have God. And then Moses is running up and down to speak to both, to Mount Sinai, And Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I have done to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice, God says, and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all the people." For all the earth is mine, the Lord says, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words in which you shall speak to the children of Israel. So as I said, next week I am super excited. We are about to spend about two months in the Ten Commandments. One of the most historical, famous movies have been filmed. Books have been written. You have heard it from VBS to the adulthood. We are going into the Ten Commandments, and it is going to be an amazing time. But this week is the moment before the moment. God's people are free. Hear me. God's people are free, but they're tired. God's people are led, but they need direction. And this is really what leads to what we know as the Ten Commandments. Just kind of fast forward and look at 25, verse 25. 
It says, so Moses, this is at the end of where we'll be this morning. And it says, so Moses went down to the people and spoke to them. And in 20, and God spoke all of these words saying, I am the Lord, your God. That's where he goes right into these amazing direction that the people so desperately need. But in chapter 19, it is the moment before the moment. Chapter 19 is huge. Chapter 19 is the moment that the people are going to encounter God. I want you to think about that for a minute. Think about your life. What will be the moment, what will it look like, the moment before the moment for you? I don't care who you are, what your story is. We all have this in common, that there will be a day where creation meets their creator. What will that moment look like for you? Tell me, tell me this, if I said to you now, I know God has revealed, God has told, God is coming back at 2 p.m. today. What goes through your mind? Like right now or even the moment of death or after, you're at the pearly gates and you hear his footsteps. What is going through man's mind? Are you excited? Hopefully. Are you amazed? Is there great anticipation? Are you scared? Are you fearful? What is going through man's mind the moment before the moment? As I read this next text, this is where they're at. As I read the next verses, Moses is looking at the people and going, hey, listen, guys, this is about what's to happen. I'm not going to preach today's sermon. God is coming down. God is standing before you. God is going to speak. So in this moment, there is no concern about Pharaoh or them being hungry or them being thirsty. No one cares about the Red Sea or the Egyptians. All they have going through their mind is, I am about to meet my maker. God is coming He has told me when he's doing so. What do they do to prepare? Look at 7 through 15. I want you to have that moment. As I read, I want you seeing the text, but I want you just thinking about your own life. Like if this was me, what would be coursing through my mind? Look at 7. So Moses called and came before the people and the elders And laid before them all these words in which the Lord had commanded him to tell them. Then all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. So they're off to a good start, right? So I want you to imagine that. If I go, guys, he's coming at two, and this is what he wants you to do. Do you know what Cliff Dill, honey, says? Hunter, I got no problem with it. Just tell me. I'm with it. Tell me where to be, what to say, what to wear. And that's what Moses is about to say. He says, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. So Moses brought back the words of the people to the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, behold, I come to you in a thick cloud that the people may hear when I speak with you and believe you forever. So Moses told the words of the people to the Lord. And then the Lord said to Moses, remember, up and down the mountain, right? Up and down the mountain. Then the Lord said to Moses, go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes and let them be ready for the third day. For on the third day, the Lord will come down upon Mount Sinai in the sight of the people. The Lord is coming. Are you ready to meet your maker? So you shall set bounds before the people all around them saying, take heed to yourself that you do not go up the mountain or touch its base. Whoever touches the mountain shall surely be put to death. Not a hand shall touch it. This is what God says to him. Not a hand shall touch him, but he shall surely be stoned if he does, or shot with an arrow. Whether man nor beast, he shall not live. When the trumpet sounds long, they shall know the near the com- that, that com- shall come near the mountain at that time. So Moses went down from the mountain to the people and sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes. And he said to the people, Be ready for the third day. Do not even come near 
your wives. So I want you to think about this. At that moment, guys, all of their heartache, all of their troubles, nothing mattered. All that they had been through in slavery, all the ones that they had buried, all their hardships and persecutions, Pharaoh and the Egyptians, the Red Sea, them being hungry and thirsty and lost and angry. In that moment, nothing mattered. The question was, were they ready? In chapter 19, I just want you to write this. Were they ready? Am I ready? That is what the whole chapter is. God is coming. The question is, were the people ready? The God who brought the flies and the frogs and the death to the Egyptians, the God who called Moses, wanted to speak to them. The God who brought the plagues, rescued them, and walked before them, was coming to speak to them. I want you to heed my words. There will be a day. There will be a day where the God who created Adam and Eve. There will be a day where the God who called Abraham and spoke to Moses. There will be a day where the God who flooded the world, there will be a day where the God who sent his son to die for you and a, there will be a day for where the God who created reality in space and time. There will be a day where all prayers who are heard by and all sermons are preached through, he will stand before you. I want you to think about that. As I was studying, I couldn't get this thought through my mind. A lot of you guys have been raised in church. Some of you haven't. But we come and we read and we learn and we teach from VBS to Sunday school to sermons to music. We give towards, we speak of when we are joy-filled and when we are scared, we pray to. And there will be a day where that being stands before you. Not before us, not before a collective, but before you. God will stand before Wyatt. God will stand before Hunter. God will stand before David. God will stand before Liam. The God who hears all prayers will stand before you. Are you ready to encounter that moment? Just think about it. Are you ready to encounter that moment? Are you ready to meet your maker? Here's a reality that that I have faced in my life, that as I grow closer to God, I become very aware of the distances between us. Does that make sense to you? And what I mean by that is, as I grow closer in sanctification to more like his son, I grow closer to meeting my maker, and every day I get closer in knowledge and faith and time. Tomorrow, I will be closer to standing before God than today. Make sense? And as I grow closer to God, I start to realize how far apart I am from Him. See, in the beginning of my life and probably yours, salvation was this simple, Hunter, do you believe and is this worth it? Right? Do I believe and is this worth it? Am I willing to stand on stage? Am I willing to put my faith and trust? Am I willing to live faithfully? Am I willing, right? In the beginning. And then I start to grow. And then it was just me and him, right? Taking on the world. I'm going to teach Sunday school. And I'm going to give a little. I'm going to serve a little. And I can't wait to get up to heaven and give my maker a fist bump because we did it. And as you grow and as you grow and as you grow and you start to know the Lord more intimately and you start to know his word more thoroughly, you start to realize that there is a gulf between man and God. That I am not God and he is not man. How could a sinful man ever be ready to encounter a perfect God? Write that. How could a sinful man ever 
be ready to encounter a perfect God? What would man have to do to prepare himself for such a moment? What could I tell you here today as I ask that question, are you ready to meet the Lord? What could I tell you to prepare yourself? What did Moses tell him? He said, guys, whatever your Sunday best is, wear it. That's what he said. If your clothes are dirty, what did Moses say? Wash them up. <laughs> like he's coming, make sure you look decent. That's what Moses says. And you know what he says? What does he say about his wife? He says, leave them alone. Leave your wife alone. Why? Is it sinful to be intimate? He's talking about intimate relations. Why does Moses say this? Not because it's bad to have an intimate relationship with your wife. It's your wife. But what he's telling the people is, is stay focused. So it's like me telling you guys, hey, listen, guys, if you have a cell phone, chunk it out the window. God's coming back at 2 p.m. Like no one do anything but sit and be ready. Was that good enough? God even told them for their own safety to put up barriers. He says, no one can touch me. But not only can no one touch me, no one can touch what? The stage. Like you can't even touch the speech. You can't even touch where he's standing. He goes, Moses, put on your best. Tell him to be ready. This is when I'm coming and put barriers all around me. Because if they break through and they touch me or even the land I stand on, they will surely perish. Tell them to be ready because when they hear the trumpets, I'm coming. Chris told us the same thing in the text that he read in Revelation. When you hear the trumpets, I'm coming. So what is the reality that those people and you and I are in today? That you and I are drawn into a personal relationship with a holy God that is too dangerous to even approach. Let me read it again. That you and I are drawn, we are invited into a personal relationship with a holy God who God himself says, I am even too dangerous for you to even approach. So what hope does man have? How could one be ready? For my parents in here? To have children who go, I want nothing more than my child to know God, to be ready for that moment. It, it keeps me up at night. I can't sleep. For those who don't know if they're saved or lost, or for you guys who know you are lost, or for those who just haven't been taught salvation correctly, how could man be ready to meet God? What hope do we have? What is the plan? Look at 16 through 22. It tells us. It says, And it came to pass on the third day, in the morning that there were thunderings and lightnings. Don't divorce yourself from the moment. Think of your own life. If you are standing there with them, God comes exactly when he said that he would come. And a thick cloud on the mountain and the sound of the trumpet was very loud so that all the people who were in the camp trembled. And Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was completely covered in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Can you imagine yourself? Clay, I have, I have one slide of just the mountain. Do you have that, brother? That's a real place. You can go today. That is where they stood. I want you to envision. Don't divorce yourself from the moment. God is coming down. The place is in flames. He comes down in smoke, and they're standing at the base of it. And Moses says, be in your Sunday best. Be focused. This is when he's coming. Wait for the trumpets, and don't touch him. Don't touch him and don't stand on the land that he walks on. It says, 
Now Mount Sinai was completely covered in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace and the whole mountain quaked greatly. And when the blast of the trumpet sounded long and became louder and louder, can you imagine that church? Moses spoke and said, God answered him by the voice and the Lord came down upon the mountain and at the top of the mountain and the Lord called Moses to the top and Moses went up. And the Lord said to Moses, go down and warn the people lest they break through to gaze at the Lord and many of them will perish if they do. Also let the priests who come near the Lord consecrate themselves. Let the Lord break out against them. So once again, what does God tell them? God says, I'm coming because I love these people. I have rescued these people. I have saved these people, but they are imperfect. I am, in, I am perfect. Man cannot be in the sight of God. That is not how this equation works. So if they are amazed by my glory and they run to me, they will perish. Hold them back. So what hope did these people have in chapter 19? What was probably the one thing that brought these people comfort? It was Moses. At least they had a man who was called by God, who had encountered God, who had spoken to God, and who had already stood before God. So Moses in Exodus brought the, the, the people of God, the Israelites, comfort that they had a great mediator. Moses is the one who ran up and down the mountain, bridging the gap between former slave and perfect God. But here's the question for you and I today. Moses isn't with us. Thousands of years after Exodus, what is the people at Eastview in 2022, what hope do we have? Because we don't have Moses running up and down the mountain. And the last time I checked, we are still imperfect and he is still perfect. So how can we be prepared to meet our maker? I told you to put a tassel in Hebrews 9. I want you to see it. This is where we're going to slow the moment down for my kids. I want you to open your Bibles. Don't lose your pastor. I want you to see this. Let me give you the cliff notes up to this point. They are saved. They are rescued. They are tired. They are in need. God stops the journey. He tells Moses, I'm going to come down and speak to the people, but I am perfect. And man cannot be in the sight of God because he is sinful and broken and lost and imperfect. So there had to be a great mediator for the people of Exodus. So what hope do we have? Where is Jesus in Exodus 19? Look at Hebrews 9, 11 through 15. It says, But Christ, but Christ came as a high priest of the good things to come, with the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made of hands, that is, not of this creation. Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once and for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Now really highlight, focus on 13 and 14. For if the blood of bulls and goats, he's speaking of the Old Testament, right? For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled on the unclean sanctifies for the purification of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the internal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from the dead, works to serve the living God? And for this reason, he is the great mediator. Highlight that. What is man to do in 2022 as we are at the bottom of the mountain and God is still perfect? What hope do we have? He says, and for this reason, he is the great mediator for the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. Here's a hard truth that the sooner you know this, the safer your soul will be. 
There is nothing man can do to to prepare himself to encounter God. Hear me. There is nothing man can do. Nothing. You can wash your clothes. You can throw your phones away. You can stay away from your wife. You can know the day he is coming. There is nothing man can do to prepare himself to stand before the God The only hope we have is the great mediator and the bridge of Christ that stands before us in Him. In 1 Timothy 2.5, you don't have to flip, it says, For there is one God and there is one mediator between God and man, and that is Christ Jesus. I want you to hear that. For there is one God and there is one mediator between God and man, and that is Christ Jesus. And so we all ask ourselves this question, second most important question you'll ever ask yourself, is the creation ready to meet its creator? Are you ready to stand before God? And the answer is no. The most important question you will ever ask, number one, is not are you ready to meet God, but is do you know Jesus? The sinful, broken, unworthy man will never be able to confidently stand before the Creator. We will never be able to walk up the mountain. We will never be able to touch Him. We will never be able to stand before Him. Our only hope is the bridge that bridges the gap, and that is Christ. And so in the New Testament, one thing that we are reading here, Paul says to us, your only hope is not what you wear, not what you do, not what you give, not what you serve in. It is Christ. It is not are you ready, but more do you know. Do I know Jesus? That is our only hope. John 14, 6, I love this. We read this a thousand times, but I want you to look at it at an angle. It said, Jesus said to him, I am the way and I am the truth and I am the life. And what? No one comes to the Father except through me. So when I was a much younger man, even a believer, I remember reading this and I kind of viewed Jesus as like the gatekeeper, right? Like, man, for, for me to go up the mountain, like, for me to get to God, like, I'm going to have to go through Jesus. Like, Jesus is going to have to look at God and go, hey, he's good. Come on, Hunter, come on up. And, but no, 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 no. Jesus is not the gatekeeper. He is the bridge. Jesus is the way. Because man will never be able to stand before God our only way and our only path and our only hope is through Christ. And the last time I have you flip. I want you to see 2 Corinthians. It's just a few chapters up. Go to 2 Corinthians. I want you to flip. Stay with me. It's important. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Kiddos, have your Bible. I want you to flip. Second Corinthians chapter 5. So you and I, God is coming down, God loves, God rescues, God is perfect. We are standing before him, imperfect, not ready, right? What is our hope? Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, please. Look at verses 16. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, the bridge, and has given us a ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing the trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word word of reconciliation. Now then, now we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, 
to be reconciled to God. Last verse, hang with me. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. There will be a day where God comes down the mountain and there will be no barrier put up. Not only will we be able to touch the mountain, but we will be able to touch him in a day where the imperfect steps foot in perfection. And on that day, please hear me, and on that day, whatever demons, whatever drama, whatever problems you have in this life, there will be no pharaohs that matter. If you have not followed me at all today, hang on these words. There will be a day where you stand before the Lord and none of your pharaohs will matter. Your jobs will not matter. Your kids will not matter. Your marriage will not matter. Your money will not matter. The only thing is, do I know Jesus Christ? Am I ready? Absolutely not. It would be impossible for man to ever be. Do I know Jesus Christ? Do I know Jesus Christ? I believe, I need, I won't. I have placed my faith and trust in Him and Him alone. And now we stand before and we wrap our arms around a perfect God. So I told you this as, as we close. I, t- <clears throat> I told you this as, as I met and I prayed and we baptized Wes. That whole do I believe, do I need, and do I want. No one ever sat down with me in my moments where God stepped forward and really ever explained salvation to me in that way for my mind to grab. And salvation is not a checkbox that you check. Salvation is not fire insurance to avoid hell. Salvation is not this moment where you hopefully one day get to fist bump your creator. Salvation is the moment where God steps forward and you see his glory. You see his sin. You believe that he exists and that he is good and that the Bible is true. But not only do you believe, I need I need him. I will never as a sinful, broken man ever be ready for a perfect God. I have to have a substitute, and that is his son, Jesus Christ. That is salvation for my kiddos who have not been able to put it together. Pastor Hunter's about to pray, hang on me. For you guys that go, I don't know. I got to get up on stage. Is it worth it? What is baptism? Do I believe him, but do I desperately have to have him? I am sinful. I am broken. I am unworthy. I am never going to be ready. There's going to be a day where we all hear the trumpets sound and we are going to be fearful. And the only thing that's going to bring us peace is our knowledge of Jesus Christ. Do I know Jesus? He is our path to a perfect God. He is our only hope in being ready for God coming down that mountain and you and I standing before him. And so if you are saved today, praise Jesus. If you are saved today, praise Jesus. If you are not, and that is not the Jesus you know, if you say, hey, Hunter, I checked that box. I don't want to go to hell, but that is not the Christ I know. He is not my way. He is not my path. I believe, but I have never needed. I pray that you pray, God, save me through what was accomplished by your son. That's what I pray for your soul. Let's bow our heads. God, we thank you for today. Lord, as we come together, Lord, I pray for all those who might not know you. Lord, I know how the majority looks, and we sit in here in all different spaces. There are people in here that have been saved by the blood of Christ for decades. There are people who have been raised in the church but do not know you. And then there are people who are visiting and who are new to this who plead to understand. Lord, I pray that you step forward in all of our lives. And save and sanctify and redeem. Lord, I pray that if, no, if someone is in this room and they have not placed their faith 
and their trust in your Son, Jesus Christ. I pray that today's the day. I don't care how young, how old, but there will be a day where the creation meets the Creator. There will be a day where we meet our Maker and we will have nothing to show for ourselves besides our relationship with your Son. We will not be able to show our attendance, our service, our last name, the money that is given, our good deeds. None of it will be worth anything. And in Isaiah, your word says that our works are rubbish compared to what is required. The only hope we have is do we know your son? And if we do, let it fill our hearts with joy. And if we don't, let it convict us to our knees. Save us, save us, save us. In your precious name, the church says in harmony, amen.